God is good, amen? Come on, tell your neighbor, God is good to me. Amen. And truly God is good to you, man, that you're able to be in this place this morning, be a part of this vision to see God's kingdom come in every area of your life. Amen. So every single person that is here and that came into this uh, event, if you are from here or if you're maybe from a different state or if you're maybe watching us online, we want to let you know that this is not just a three-day event that we want to make you feel better or we want to make you cry or experience something. We want to make a movement to see God's kingdom come not just in tri-cities but in your state in your city in your generation in your schools wherever that you are that God's kingdom will come to your place in Jesus name amen if you believe it put your hands together for Jesus Christ and that is our vision that is why this conference is called kingdom come we want to see God's will being done in every area of your life and we believe that God has already started something last night we know that we've been hearing testimonies where people are sharing how they feel some chains are being lifted off their their lives how there there's some addiction that they were struggling they're being broken and we believe that today also God will continue to move in people's lives amen church so let's uh let's this morning let's just go straight into um the word that's going to be spoken I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to talk to you about a topic called the power of the gospel we're still going into the same um the same the same conference of kingdom come and this morning we're just going to take a few moments of your time to talk about the power of the gospel so if you have your bibles with you open to second corinthians 2 verses uh, five, uh chapter 5 verse 20 it says now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God we are Christ's ambassadors you have to understand every single person in this place we are Christ's ambassadors we are not representing a culture we're not representing a race we're not representing color uh, ethnicity or uh, whatever that you're coming from we are representing God's kingdom we are Christ's ambassadors we have to understand many times we as people think that oh just because I'm coming from an American culture I need to represent that culture or or, or Hispanic culture or Russian culture it's not about culture race or age it's about the kingdom of God we are Christ ambassadors so whatever the kingdom of God represents that's what we represent we are not representing saying no this is the right thing to do we represent what God's word says and that is alone because God's word is our standard we have to understand number one point if you have your notes I want you to write down that we are Christ ambassadors we are not representing any other thing but what the kingdom of God stands for and I just want to go a few points and to um, to address a few things what is a ambassador and what do they represent number one thing is it is he is appointed by a king and he is not voted into position he's appointed to represent a state or a kingdom Number two. Number three, he is committed only to the kingdom's interest. And uh, I want to stop on that one real uh, for a few moments. I remember when, when our pastor that spoke in English just a few, a, few, uh, a few moments ago, when our pastor first came to America, uh, his heart's cry was, God, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And you have to understand, when we first came to America, our pastor did not speak any English. We did not have any money. We did not have any resources. We had no connections. And we had a couple of churches that were saying, hey, come join us. You know, we're going to, you know, come join the, 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 you know, the culture. You know, come join us, uh, Russians, you know, Ukrainians, whatever that we were back then. Come join us and let's just, you know, do our thing. You know, don't be too radical. Don't go all crazy. I know you're coming out from this um, from Russia whatever you were doing but just come join us but our pastor was always saying we want to see revival of God happen in this city I know we're coming from a culture I know we're coming from a background I know maybe maybe we were taught something but we want to bring God's kingdom on this earth in tri-cities in whatever city that we want to see the kingdom of God happen there 
And we know as, as uh, our pastor was rejected by many churches. Our pastor was saying, uh, people, other people uh, were just saying that, you know, it's not going to happen. You don't have any people. You just have a bunch of teenagers. You have a bunch of kids. Nothing's going to work out. What are you just talking about? Just sit down, relax, and let just, let just things happen. But our pastor was an ambassador. He said, I'm here to represent the kingdom of God. I'm not here to just sit and just do two hours of church. I want to see God's revival happen in Tri-Cities and remember that we as a family and I'm, I'm pastor's son I remember our pastor my dad just going through that time of rejection where people did not understand the vision they were saying you know you you're just you're insane nothing's gonna work out you're gonna open a church it's gonna be shut down you know you don't have any money at that time we just had only few families and all those families were working construction just to just to make ends meet so we didn't we were talking about getting our own building we we're talking about having our own tv show we we're talking about reaching you know tri-cities for jesus christ yet we were small but an ambassador knows that it's not about what you you have you are representing the kingdom of God you're not coming from from a place and to be able to bring that place to here you're coming from the king of kings and the lord of lords and when you are an ambassador you have heavenly heavenly's backing you up you have God's word standing behind your back that says whatever that you need we got your back and our pastor knew that he knew that look I know I might be small. I know I might be Russian. I do not know how to speak English. I know I might not have resources, but God has sent me to this place to represent the kingdom of God. So this morning, I want to encourage you wherever that you're coming from, maybe you're watching online and that is your heart's cry. You're saying that, God, I want to represent your kingdom. We want to let you know this morning that God is standing behind you and he says that whatever is for you, and if I am for you, nothing can be against you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Our pastor knew that I'm representing God's kingdom. I'm not coming just by myself, but I have God backing me up. And that is, I was a pastor's vision. Just committed to only to see the kingdom's interest. And the next thing is that if you are ambassador for the kingdom of God, you are totally covered by the kingdom. This is, for some, it might be hard to believe, but for us as a church, we, we lived it. When we first started our, our church and our pastor said, you know, we're going to have to get our own building. And many churches around us, they, they, they existed for over 20 years until then, until now, they still don't have their building. And our pastor says, we need to get our own building. We only had three families who were just working construction. So everybody was like, you don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Just go, just, just lay low. Don't make so much noise. You're, you're embarrassing everybody. Just calm down, you know. But our pastor's like, I want to see revival happen in Tri-Cities. I want to see the will of God come to Tri-Cities. And we had an opportunity to, to purchase this building, the, the very building that we, you're sitting on today. And they said for us to come up with an insane amount of money for a down payment. And we did not even have church registry we our pastor was not even licensed we didn't have a church bank account I mean can you imagine we had nothing but when you know that you're an ambassador for Christ Jesus God says that whatever that you need I will provide God says that look heaven and earth is mine the kingdoms gold and silver that is mine if you want to represent me I got your back and the very building that you're sitting in right now it was a miracle the way we got it because in, in just a short amount of time, we're able to get, uh, gather the finances. Until this day on, we're not paying a penny for this building. Somebody else is renting out this facility and they're covering all the utilities bill, all the payments, all the mortgages. And today we are basically sitting in our own building at no cost. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. This is, this is just to show you one thing. If you are going to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, if you are going to represent the kingdom of God, God says, I got your back. I will be able to support whatever that you need. If it is finances, I'll be able to provide it. If it is, if it is to learn how to speak a different language, I'll give you the grace to do that. And if you've even seen this morning, a pastor is preaching in English. 
I mean to to it's only been a couple of years that that our pastor had to relearn the English and I remember even when our pastor was starting and you know and many people that live here for 30 years till till this day they still speak their own language but our pastor had a vision I want to see the kingdom come and God has given us our pastor the grace to be able to learn the language and even some of the words our pastor says we're like like google this you know just gotta you have to learn the words that our pastor saying because when you are representing God's kingdom God says all the resources that I have you can tap into it you can have it if it is that you are seeing you're in a city where there's so many drug addicts and you say God I want to see my the kingdom of God come to that city God says you know what I'll be able to help you provide a rehab center I'll be able to give you the resources for the drug addicts to be set free if you're in a city or if you're in a place where you see people who are sick God says there is grace enough to see healing happen because you are representing my kingdom you are no longer by yourself you're no longer representing a culture but you represented the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen, church? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. A few more points is that you are totally protected by his kingdom. Next point is that you never become a citizen of a state or a kingdom which he is assigned. Also has access to all the nation's wealth for the assignment and like we talked about this building is just a miracle that you're sitting in a building that is which is being completely completely paid for somebody else this to show you that you represent God God has your back when you take care of what matters to God the most God will begin to take care of the things that matter to you the most this is this is just a proven fact and this wants to be we want to be an encouragement to you this morning that wherever that you're coming from whatever state that you're from whatever city or church that you are in if you represent the kingdom of God and what kingdom of God stands for you'll be able to have God behind your back and say I got you every step of the way and we will see revival happen in your city in Jesus name amen also ambassador is the one who never speaks his personal position on any issue only his kings also his goal is to influence the territory for his kingdom the will of God is to see revival happen in our city. The will of God is to be able to see revival happen wherever that you're coming from. Maybe it is just you have a home group. God's will is for you to have the kingdom of God come. How do we how do we do the job of the ambassador and the greatest example that we can see is Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes on this earth he begins to represent the kingdom of God and what was the kingdom of God what did Jesus begin to do Jesus became and stepped on this earth he did not try to blend in he did not come to Pharisees and say hey guys fill me in what was happening for the 2,000 years you know just what's the latest tricks how do we win people how do we talk to people how do we pray how we sprinkle the blood how do we cut the cuff the calf or whatever you guys are doing no Jesus comes on this earth and he sees the captive and he begins to set them free he sees the sick he begins to lay hands on them and see them being recovered he sees those who are being afflicted and he prays for them and he sees their bondages begin to come off Jesus Christ is the greatest example of the kingdom of God is to see those who are broken being healed those who are sick with the curable diseases being healed those who are bondage being set free those who are in prison doors being released and that is the kingdom of God Jesus Christ is the greatest example to set the standard of the kingdom of God. You cannot change the world if you're in bondage to the world. You cannot change the world if you're in the bondage to the world. And in um, John 17, 16, it talks about, Jesus says, they are not of the world even as I am not of it. Jesus clearly says that, look, you cannot change this world if you are trying to blend in. You cannot simply you it's it's like two men trying to two blind men trying to lead each other you cannot change a, a, a blind person if you yourself is blind and how do we change the world 
how do we begin to change the world we begin to to uh to accompany their needs we begin to to do things that if people are in bondage we begin to serve those people who are in the bondage to see them set free to see people who are who are sick we need to begin to pray for them we can't be a people who when they come to church just begin to entertain people oh please do this we cannot like concentrate on not to offend people so they don't leave the church we need to preach the gospel we need to preach the kingdom of God because that's what people need Jesus did not come and just didn't try to blend in with the with the uh the Pharisees and Sadducees he came he knew that he's gonna offend people he knew people were gonna re uh, reject him he knew people were gonna call him names he knew people were gonna say oh you're the you're casting out demons with the demon or, or whatever he knew that he was gonna get uh, uh, criticized but he knew one thing the kingdom of God needs to come because there is a world that is suffering there are people who are in bondage there's people who are crying out there's people who are cutting themselves there's people who are committing suicide and I need to bring the kingdom of God to this earth and we see that Jesus Christ changed the world and since that day it has never been the same amen church come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ we we tried it all I'm telling you our church we tried it all I mean the things that we have done to try to blend in you guys don't even imagine <laughs> we had fear factors you guys know fear factors yeah we made people eat worms <laughs> No joke. I'm not even joking. You can look at our, our archive. You can see. We had fear factor. We said like, we try to bring people in. We do like, okay, you eat this worm and if you win, we'll give you an iPod. And they, after that, they went to the hospital. We're like, well, hopefully the iPod covers your bill. <laughs> I mean remember we had this um this construction board that it was just like this long construction board that if you try to walk on it it becomes very wobbly and to be able to pass it so we had this one girl like I'll do it I'm like go for it and then she got up and just like, wow you know so we did so many things that you try to to just to try to become too appealing to people but it did not work it did not work because you cannot change the world that is blind if you yourself are blind. You cannot begin to entertain people, those who are hurting. What can you say to a person that is in cancer? What can you say to, to a marriage that is falling apart? How, what, what joke can you tell them? What encouragement speech can you tell them to change their life? You simply need to bring him the power of God to be able to change the situation. And that's how you change people. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus that that is the power of the gospel it's not entertainment it is not make you feel good it is a somewhat offensive it is somewhat radical it's somewhat on the crazy side but when you are suffering and when you are in need and when you're crying out for help you do not need a joke you do not need two hours of service you need an answer and that answer is Jesus Christ and he's the only one who's the solution to all fundamental issues of life and his name is Jesus Jesus Christ who's the King of King and the Lord of Lords. Amen church? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I remember the, I remember one instance when we uh, we were here and um, we were here and we're just the beginning of our ministry where we're getting to know the the demonic world of uh, people being possessed and people being set free. I remember one girl that came here and she was doing worship but she was just like being, sh she was being like shaking like crazy. She was like falling on the floor and she's kind of shaking and some pastor's like this, that's the power of God. Let her just shake. And our pastor, our pastor saw that he's like no this girl's demon possessed. She needs to be delivered. This girl needs deliverance and a lot of them are like let her shake man. It's Jesus. Yes, yeah, Jesus wants to set her free. So you need to help her. And you know, a lot of pastors are like, well, this shouldn't happen in church. You shouldn't be praying for demons in church. Let's just, there's this hype. Everybody's jumping. Everybody's clapping. If you're going to start praying for this girl who's demon possessed, you're going to ruin the presence. Jesus, Jesus is not going to be happy with you. But our pastor's like, no, this girl needs deliverance. This girl needs help. She's, she's suffering. So they begin to pray for that girl. And that girl is just being tormented. And finally the girl was set free. And we started talking to the girl. And she said that she went to a movie. She watched this horror movie. And since that, just this fear came upon her. And then since, since that, every time she comes to, to worship or to pray, she just begins to be tormented. She begins to be in pain. She begins to be in affliction. And... Every time she goes to church, they just, they just let her shake. But a pastor was standing there and said, let the kingdom come. 
The kingdom come is for those who are bound to be released. For those who are sick, for those who are in pain to be released from every prison, from every door. Because that's what Jesus came and that's what Jesus done. And since that day, that girl has been set free. That girl has been worshiping God. And that girl has been going after God. And that is the kingdom of God, church. We're not gathering here for these three days or however many uh, however time that you're coming here for just to entertain you we want to make a movement to show that you need to have the cry of God in your heart saying God let your kingdom come in my city God let your kingdom come in my state let your kingdom come in my country let your kingdom come in my school that if those who are afflicted and I am around them the kingdom is going to come out out of me because Christ is backing up every word and if I stand upon God's word God's word says that I I'm watching over my word that it makes sure that it produces fruit. Make sure it does not come back to me void. That when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. When you cast out demons, they will go, I got your back. And if I am for you, who can be against you? Come on church. If God is on your side, who can come against you? God is all powerful. He's all infinite. He's everywhere present at one time. He says that if you begin to become the ambassador for me, if you represent me, I'm going to link I'm going to partner up with you to make sure that the captives get set free. That those who are sick will begin to be healed. Those who are bound will be released. And that is the kingdom of God. Amen, church? Second point I want to let you know is that the biggest miracle that we talked about is the salvation of a person's soul. The power of the gospel is in salvation of the soul. Prophet T.B. Joshua likes to say that you can be sick yet you can be a friend of God. You can be bound, yet you be a friend of God. But what's the greatest miracle is the salvation of one's soul. Is when you know that your soul is eternally saved from the kingdom of darkness. That is the biggest miracle. And when Jesus came on this earth, his main mission was to rescue, to reconcile men to God. That was his, that was his greatest mission. He went around preaching the gospel to be able to see that those who are under the bondage, that they will be reconciled to God. So the biggest miracle is a salvation of one's soul. Salvation is not an accident. It is not a coincidence. It is something strategic. It is something that is organized. It is something that is planned. I want you to hear that again. It is not an accident. It is not a coincidence. It is organized. It is planned. Many times we, we hear this, these people uh, saying that, oh, if a sinner wants to get saved, let him come to church and just get saved. It doesn't happen like that. You have to plan for it. You have to strategically know that you need to, if your, your friend is, does not know God, you need to strategically plan, how do I invite him to church? How do I witness to my friend? If your family members do not know God, you need to strategically pray for them. God, I want to see my family saved. It's not something that you sit back, relax and hope one day they come to know God. It's not going to happen by itself and it's not an accident or coincidence. It is organized and it is strategic. In our church, we, we do everything that we can to concentrate, to bring those who do not know God so that they'll be able to, to come to church and receive Jesus Christ. We even come up with videos, uh, of, of comedy videos of how to, just an evangelistic tool of how to invite people to church. Yes, we tell you how not to invite, but you should turn on your brains and, and to figure out how to invite. You know, we do, we concentrate so much because we know it's not an accident. Our church existed for a while and we know one thing, that people do not just come by accident. So this will only one time happen where somebody needed to use the bathroom and they went into our, our bathroom there and they heard the message and they came in. That only one time happened and 10 years of existence only happened once. The other times, we had to do the job. So you have to get, as a church, as a people of God, you have to understand salvation of people's souls is a strategy. It is something organized. So right now I want to do, um, give you six ways, six ways, uh, practical ways of evangelism. First one is confrontational. And we see in Acts 2, there was a, where uh, the gospel was being preached and they, there was preached that you repent and be baptized and come from your sin ways and, and, and accept Jesus Christ. That's one of the ways you can invite people to church is confrontational. Two is intellectual. 
In Acts 17, Paul was debating with, with philosophers and all that. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know much. <laughs> Intellectual is not my strongest suit. And uh, confrontational, yeah, that's not my strongest suit too because I'm more of a soft-hearted. Begin to I start confronting somebody. They say something back to me like, okay, fine, you're right. And just walk away. <laughs> Those, those two are not my strongest suit, but I just want to give you the six ways of practical ways how we can help somebody be reconciled back to God. Number three is testimonial. In John 9, uh, the blind man said that one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Testimonial is one of the most powerful uh, ways to evangelize because you can share to them about, hey, I was addicted to drugs. God set me free. And that's a testimony for people because people do not want to hear come to my church so you can feel good people have problems people have sicknesses people have bondages they need to know hey if I come to church will I be able to be set free I have this addiction to cutting myself can I get rid of that I have addiction to smoking weed I'm addicted to alcohol is there something that I got that sets people free but when you share your testimony people will be able to believe hey if it's possible I want to get rid of it and we know that uh, we listened to a testimony of of um Bryson yes he was delivered from from addiction to pornography masturbation we have many people like Luis who was delivered from uh, addiction to smoking weed my brother who was addicted to drugs for seven years and when they go to the gym when they go to schools when they go to Starbucks when they share that testimony that is power that is just to show that God is alive yesterday today and forever and he did it for me and he's not a respecter of persons he can also do it for you number four is relational um, go and Mark 5 we see that uh, uh, people went to to people's houses and they begin to relate with people they begin to tell them about uh, God and how much and what God has done for them number five is uh, invitational we see in John 4 how the Samaritan woman where God where Jesus Christ ministered to her after that she went to the whole city and she ministered the whole city and invited them to hear what Jesus Christ has done for her also number six is serving in Acts 9 we see that Dorcas she impacted her city by the act of deeds she was serving the city and that city come came to know Jesus Christ and these are the six steps we want to let you know however it works for you I do not know but live a lifestyle of bringing souls to the kingdom of God. Live a lifestyle of bringing people to church. When you, when you are coming to church, don't let your phone be, be, uh, uh, be just passive. Be sending people text message through Facebook, through Instagram. Be posting videos like we, like we did. It's actually, those videos are actually a strategic way to invite people to church. This is, I'm telling you, we, we go to the gym. You go to your gym and you ask people around, have you seen a video how not to invite people to church? And they'll quote you. They'll quote things that you said in the video. They'll tell you things, oh dude, this was so funny. Just do it. You know, all these things. And you're like, you're walking and you're like, this is a perfect way to tell them, hey, come to church. Hey, this Wednesday we got conference. This Friday we have conference. God's going to do something. And that already is an, inv an invitational tool to see people come to church. You don't know what their people are going through. This one time I remember... Um, I was having home group and uh, nobody could come to my home group. Uh, we, we were about to meet at a house that nobody could come to my house. We said, let's go to Starbucks. Nobody could meet at Starbucks. And this guy just like, I'm at home, you know, you can come to my house. I'm like, fine, you know, let's, let's go to your house. So we come to the house and um, there's some other people, their friends were just, just hanging out, cooking, whatever. And I, we started talking about church. We started talking about what God is doing in people's lives. Yet little did we know there was a person in that room who was, uh, who was suicidal, who was taking depressant pills. And as we were talking about just simply church, we're talking about the things that we do. This girl just started bawling. Just, she ran out of the house. So we didn't think anything of it. So as we were leaving the place, the girl ran up to us and said, please I'm, I'm at the end of everything I, I need help I need I need you guys to reach out to me I need you I need you I need you to help me I'm just I just don't know what to do so we from that we invited her to church she gave her life to Jesus Christ she got baptized and since that day she stopped taking those depressant pills come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ this is it, it it's something that we do not know what your friends are going to, what they're going through 
Many people, they're not going to post on Facebook, oh, I'm suicidal. Oh, my, my mom just died. Oh, my mom has cancer and all these things. You do not know. But when you begin to invite people to church, when you begin to reach out to them, Jesus Christ begins to touch his need, their needs. Jesus Christ begins to reach out deep, begins to deal with the pains that hurt, with, with the things that they're just, somebody rejected them, somebody abused them, somebody hurt them. And Jesus Christ begins to mend their souls. And that is how winning is done. That's how Jesus Christ begins to reconcile people from, from, from their addictions into freedom, from their uh, sickness into health. And this is how we bring people to church. We want to encourage every single person this morning. You don't need to be a, a pastor to invite somebody. You don't need to be a preacher. You don't need to be on a worship team to invite. All the thing you need to do is just open your mouth. Say, hey. There's a God that heals. There's a God that delivers. There's a God that saves. I can show you many testimonies. Here's my testimony. Here's a video. This, this, that. We need to begin to offer people hope that God is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he can do it for you in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I want us all right now to, to rise up on our feet. And, and what, what we talked about this morning we talked about the power of the gospel. What is the kingdom of God? What is power of the gospel? What does gospel represent? And gospel represents those who are hurting being, being healed. Those who are bound being released. Those who are under oppression being set free. And that is the power of the gospel. So this morning as, as we share these practical steps, as we share this vision, we want to let you know that it is not just to entertain you. We want to see your city being turned around for God. We want to see your school being one for Jesus. We want to see your family, your generation, those loved ones being turned to God and to be reconciled to God. And that is the kingdom of God, church. Amen.